Yeah, you know, I mean, look, I think when a lot of these platforms started getting off the ground 10, 15, 20 years ago, it was easy to preach uh, and proselytize this idea that we're working towards a higher uh, aim and we're, you know, pushing off profits in pursuit of what, whether it's organizing the world's information or connecting the world or whatever. You know, it's easy to say that in the beginning, and now we're at a point where they have to make some serious ethical decisions and, and moral decisions around how they're going to operate. And I think we're starting to really approach that. I mean, you saw Reed Hastings and uh, at the DealBook conference the other day say that we're in the entertainment business. We're not uh, trying to make some uh, moral stance. And I think the biggest risk, honestly, is, is alienating the employees who signed up in the first place uh, for this idea that they're trying to, to make the world a better place. I mean, it, Silicon Valley employees are notoriously idealistic to some right. extent, right? They want to sign up with a company that has a mission, that has some sort of clear goal. And yet, if the company that is being founded is taking $400 million from Saudi Arabia, the same country <laughs> that basically had spies embedded in Twitter, I mean, that can't go over very well. Well, and it, it's not just that. You've got to think about this. Travis Kalanick, a billionaire, he has his own funding. Does he need to accept $400 million from the Saudis, especially a year post Khashoggi's murder? I don't think so. He, there are plenty of VCs out there. And this is something I've heard over the last year since Khashoggi. People say that in, in the startup community out in Silicon Valley, if we don't take this money, someone else will. They're funding at these high levels. Mm -hmm. And so there's <laughs> uh, competition for it. And I hear Mike laughing a little bit about that. He's probably hearing the exact same thing. And so yeah. wh where else could Travis go to raise money? Plenty of places, plus his own checking account. Well, considering that uh, there's zero percent interest rates around the world, Mike, I mean, I would presume that there's a lot of money sloshing around that is not just in Saudi Arabia. <gasps> yeah. No, I mean, look, I, I think this is we're, we're getting to the point where folks are having to put their ideals, values to the test. And, and some folks, I mean, look, you can also say or make the case that uh, uh, perhaps being upfront about where they are now and, and saying, uh, look, we're here to do a job and get paid and go home. You know, maybe there's something more admirable in that than sort of posturing that you're trying to make the world a better place. And I do think right now there are folks who are I talk to that are mid-career in tech that are saying, look, I didn't join Facebook or Google or whatever because I buy into the philosophy. It's because I have kids and a mortgage and uh, and I'm trying yeah. to survive in Silicon Valley. And this is this is why I'm doing it. I. I, I... I take a little bit of exception with our with our headline, the Valley of Sin, uh, on this. But I, I, it, this reminds me of the arc of a human being's life. When you're in your 20s, you're pretty idealistic. Mm, right. You've got a lot of you've got a lot. You're going to change the world, <laughs> and you're going to feel. Re and then as you get into your whatevers, you become much more practical, <laughs> and you realize that the world is a much more complicated place uh, than you thought it was when you thought you yeah. could change the world. And I. And, and that you, and that sometimes you, I, I'm not, I'm not defending um, uh, uh, Kalanick for, for taking money from the Saudis. I, I, I don't. I think there are plenty of other places where he probably could have taken money. But if you're going to do business in a country, you have to make a decision as to whether you're willing to play by that country's rules. It I, is a simple yeah. and not so simple calculation. Hey, exactly. And that's the response we hear from all these tech companies ranging from Apple to Netflix is that we have to, play, especially Apple, we have to play by the rules in China. We have to remove apps they don't want in our app store yes. because they violate our rules. And, and that's understandable. What, what was interesting about uh, Reed Hastings' response at the DealBook conference, he didn't say that. He threw his own star, Hassan Minaj, under the bus saying, we're not in the truth to power business, we're in the entertainment business. And that, that's exactly <laughs> what that whole Hassan Minaj thing was about. It was about... Uh, speaking the truth to power, but it, it, they're one of their biggest stars, and he threw them under the bus. I'm, I'm sure there are there there must be content on Netflix beyond the one that that was this comedy. Absolutely, show that that people in in devout um, Islamic or other countries would would object to because it was it's too uh, sexually Easy. explicit or or has language in it that. And so you have to take it down if you want to do business in that country. Yeah, we're, we're at a scale we've never seen before, thanks to the power of the Internet to put a mm -hmm. platform like Netflix in almost every country, to put a social network like Facebook in almost every country. And there are things you have to noodle around with in each of those countries to, to play safe. It's, it's very interesting because we, we have this, we have this conver we've had this conversation about the NBA and China exactly. within, uh, you know, Mike, in the last month. And, and here we're talking about... Uh, content companies that are being called under question, but there, but there are yeah. all other different kinds of companies that could be put under this kind of whether it's Coca-Cola, 
uh, for that matter, or an automobile company. They have to do business yeah. and, and, and follow the rules that are set in, in Germany or Sweden or China or whatever if they want to, want to play in those markets. I, you know, it really makes, uh, it calls into question, like, what a company's sort of alignment is and where it's located. And are, are you going to export sort of Western ideals into countries abroad that, that might not abide by the exact same ways uh, we think of doing things? And, and it's, it's a legitimate question, right? Like, I think right now we're, we're seeing not just the NBA, but really, like, a lot of different companies struggle with how do we deal with China, uh, which has very different views on how speech operates and yeah. uh, at the same time is, a, is an enormous part of our business. And are we going to have to sort of thread that needle? So it's, it's, it's to the forefront and a lot of companies are grappling with this across the industry.